morning. What an honor to be introduced by your Teacher of the Year. I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, I spent several years uh, working in uh, Governor Hunt's Institute, and uh, saw North Carolina is the beacon of the South, uh, a very hopeful and forward-looking educational program. And the message I want to bring you is firstly that you should know the good news nationally because it's contrary to the message we hear so often from people on TV. And that is that the test scores of American students today are the highest they've ever been in history. For white students, black students, Asian students, and Hispanic students, the high school graduation rates today are the highest they've ever been in history for all of these groups. And the dropout rates are the lowest they've ever been in history. You need to know this. This is a real important backdrop. Where we do have an educational crisis is where there is high poverty and racial segregation. Those two in combination are toxic. Now, when we discuss school reform, it's useful to bear in mind what the top performing nations in the world do. They do not have charters. They do not have vouchers. They have a strong public school system. They fund their schools equitably so that there are minimal, if any, differences between the resources available to schools in different areas, in different neighborhoods. They treat teachers with respect as the professionals they are. They recruit highly motivated people into teaching, and they make sure that they have a strong professional education. And then they do their best to support and retain them as career professionals. They do not permit inexperienced amateurs to become teachers or principals or superintendents. Their schools have the resources they need for the children they enroll, and they have the unified support of the local community. They make sure that children are healthy and ready to learn. They do this not out of a spirit of charity, but because they know that their children are their society's future and they invest in their well-being. This is what successful nations do. Unfortunately, this is not what North Carolina is doing. For many years, North Carolina's elected officials worked together in a bipartisan manner to build a good public school system. And North Carolina saw positive results of these efforts. On the latest federal test called the National Assessment of Educational Progress, North Carolina students performed very well. Students in fourth and eighth grade were reading above the national average, which is impressive for a southern state with, a, with large rural areas and high levels of child poverty. The child poverty rate in North Carolina is 26%, which is above the national average of 22 or 23%. The national average in, of child poverty is many times more than the child poverty rate in high-performing nations. And yet we dare to compare ourselves to those countries and say we're going to achieve equity with them and test results when we're not addressing the fundamental cause of low test scores, which is poverty. Uh, in Finland, which you've heard about, which has a great education system, less than 5% of the children live in poverty as compared to our North Carolina's 26%. Uh, as Professor Jean Nickel of the University of North Carolina wrote just recently, anyone who expects to improve academic performance without reducing child poverty is expecting the impossible. The great majority of have-nots will remain at the bottom of the academic curve, not because they lack brains, not because they lack potential, but because they have not the medical care, they have not the food security, they have not the basic necessities of life, in short, they have not equality of opportunity, and that matters. Now, despite, <laughs> now, as, as I said, despite this 26% child poverty rate, North Carolina nonetheless has had a very good public school system, or at least it has until recently, when students in North Carolina participated in the international test called TEMS, they performed exceptionally well. Fourth grade students in North Carolina placed among the highest performing nations in the world. No other state that participated in the Thames test performed that well. That is a great tribute to the teachers of North Carolina. On the eighth grade international math test, North Carolina students performed above the US national average. Again, a tremendous performance from this state. And North Carolina has achieved another Incredible distinction. 
It has more nationally board certified teachers than any other state in the nation, 20,000 of them. <laughs> Wake County ranks first in the nation in the total number of national board of certified teachers. Imagine that, Wake County, North Carolina. Now, based on this performance, one would think that your governor and your general assembly would work hard to support and retain the state's greatest teachers, especially its experienced teachers who can help the newcomers. Unfortunately, they have not. Since the election of 2012, the governor and the general assembly have enacted a series of laws that treat teachers not like professionals, but like low-level workers who must be punished and chastised and reduced to contract status and told what to do at every turn. North Carolina stands today as a negative lesson to the nation about how to destroy public education and how to dismantle the teaching profession. That may sound harsh, unfortunately it's true. <laughs> watching events unfold over this past year in North Carolina has been like watching a tragedy unfold, act by act. Intelligent, well-educated people are passing laws that will cripple public education and are driving away the, the state's best teachers. You saw them in the earlier panel, some of them. But this makes no sense. The duly elected officials of this great state are destroying the very institution that made the state great and demoralizing the very people who are trusted every day to care for its children. It's like watching a farmer burn his seed corn set fire to his fields and kill his livestock. It makes no sense. In the not so distant past, thanks to the bipartisan leadership of Governor Jim Hunt, teachers in North Carolina were paid about the same as the national average. Today their pay has stagnated and they rank either 46th or 48th in the nation in pay. This is a shameful statistic. Teachers once gained extra pay for getting advanced degrees, but the General Assembly decided the teachers did not need any additional education, would not pay them to study more about their subject or to learn more about educating children with disabilities, would no longer give extra pay for those who wanted to improve their knowledge and education. Let's put it this way. The General Assembly said to the state's teachers, you don't need any more education. You have enough. What message does that send about the value of education? Not a good one. The General Assembly enacted a plan to eliminate tenure or career status, which teachers earned after four years of satisfactory service, replacing it with contracts of one, two, or three, or four years. This is supposed to make it easier to fire teachers. The legislature seems to think that the state has a plague of bad teachers, and they want every teacher to live in fear of being fired. This is not a good feeling. Teachers in North Carolina never really had tenure. In higher education, tenure means lifetime employment. In K-12 education, career status means due process, the right to a hearing in the event of dismissal. Teachers in North Carolina have been eligible to earn career status for nearly 50 years, but the General Assembly has seen fit to eliminate it. So if a teacher is falsely accused by a student, and that happens, or if a teacher dares to teach a book that someone in the community disapproves of, she may be fired without a hearing. If a principal or school board member doesn't like a teacher for whatever reason, he or she may be fired without a hearing. This is not just a loss of a minimal amount of job security. It is not just the loss of a right to a fair hearing. It is the loss of academic freedom. This harms not only teachers, but students as well, who may never learn about modern science because some find it controversial who may never read a book by John Steinbeck or Ernest Hemingway or William Faulkner or Ralph Ellison because some parent doesn't like it, and who may never learn to ask questions about history but just to parrot what's in the textbook, lest someone in the community disagree. This is not 21st century education. This is 19th century education. It's going backwards. The legislature wants districts to offer the top 25% of teachers a bonus of $500 a year for, five, for four years to abandon their right to due process. Who will be the top 25%? No one knows. It's somewhat ironic, isn't it, to offer a reward to what presumably are your best teachers so that it's easier to fire them.
Now, not content to destroy the conditions that contribute to a sense of job security and professionalism, the General Assembly lifted the limits on class sizes. Even as the number of students in the state has increased, the legislature has cut the school's budget. More than 5,000 teachers, nearly 4,000 classroom aides have been laid off. This means that working conditions will deteriorate as teachers have more children in each classroom, some of whom have disabilities, some of whom are English learners, and they will do so with less money for textbooks and other instructional materials. North Carolina now, now ranks 48th in the nation in per pupil funding. One of the nation's shining lights is going out because of unwise decisions by the state's leaders.